Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to go through some of the questions I get in my inbox. This is our third in a series, I believe. One of the first questions we had, uh, if your room is smaller, do I need diffusion? Well, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a technology to treat reflection. So if we're going to have a small room, we're going to have reflections. If we have a large room, we have reflections. So it's the time signature of those reflections that are critical. Let's take two channel playback, you know, sound, because that's the easiest to work with. We have to have a balance between the direct energy from the speakers and then all the reflections from the room. So that balance between the, the uh, reflected energy and the direct energy from the speakers must be treated correctly with the proper rates and levels of absorption and diffusion both. So both are viable technologies. So back to diffusion, what does diffusion do? It minimizes the reflection by kind of breaking it down into a bunch of little reflections, if you will. So it, it kind of confuses our brain and we can't localize where the boundary surface is. So it, it, it sounds more open. The room sounds larger than it is. Uh, notes take, have more separation and definition. So it makes small rooms sound larger. So in this case, if a room is smaller, do I need diffusion? Absolutely. You must calculate the correct prime number sequence of diffusion to use because you have, must have enough distance for the energy that goes into the diffuser to come back out and fully form. So because all those waves, waves have, or all those uh, rays have lengths to them and they have to be able to run out, you know, at least a quarter of their uh, full life distance so that, you know, you don't have any distortions. So yes, if the room is smaller, do I need diffusion? Yes, you have to choose the right type. Make sure your listening position distances and distance to the speaker and front wall are correct. What prime number quadratic do I need? <clears throat> well, this kind of goes with the diffusion question number one. Depends on distance, because we have to let that diffused energy. Think of your diffuser as a speaker. The reflected energy comes in, and then it goes out in little amounts of energy in a fan-like array. If it's vertical, it goes this way. Uh, I mean, it goes horizontally. It's hard to draw, but it, it goes this way. If it's a horizontal diffuser, the energy diffuses this way. So it's just the opposite of the physical orientation of the diffuser. If you use both, vertical and horizontal, you get two dimensions of diffusion. How many dimensions do we have in our laws of physics? Three. So you're doing pretty well with two dimensions. That's why it's popular, but you have to Know where to use it. You, you have to be really critical about its usage because it has pros and cons just like everything else also. So what quadratic series do I need? Distance. How much distance do you have between the diffuser and the listening position for the waveform to fully form? So distance is critical. Dimensions and volume of the room also because just like a speaker, a diffuser has an array of energy that it covers. It has a scope of energy that it covers, a path that it covers. So you have to match all that up and have enough distance in dimensions to support that uh, diffusion process. What is the best barrier material? I get this ev almost every day. There is no such thing. Uh, excuse me. The barrier material is completely dictated. The amount, the type, and everything that you need. Here's our barrier. How we build this barrier is completely dependent on the noise, amount, and what's the other part? Frequency. We have to know how much energy is out here causing us problems, and of course at what frequency. And with barrier technology, frequencies below 125 are much different than frequencies above 125. So the, the materials we use in the barrier, the density, the thickness, the construction methodology, everything that we put in that barrier is solely dependent on the amount and frequency of the noise that we're up against. So 5 dB of unwanted energy at 100 Hertz requires a much different barrier technology than 5 dB of noise at 500 Hertz out here on the outside. Same principles apply to the inside because noise goes both ways. A lot of people make noise in their rooms and call it music. No, they, they make music and it's called noise. But the bottom line here is, 
you know, it, it's a two-way valve. So this barrier is completely dependent on the amount of frequency. So you must measure, you can't guess. Because every uh, frequency and amplitude that you have that's a problem, you have to buy the materials and arrange them in the right way and construct the barrier to stop those frequencies with their strength. So you can't be guessing. If you do, you'll guess wrong. That's a good rule in acoustics. If you guess, if you guess in acoustics, you'll always be wrong. I mean, it's almost that absolute. So measurement first, find out what the problem is, and then build the barrier to stop the problem. You save a lot of money running a few measurements. They can be done simply on your iPhone, and I can uh, show you how to do all that. Just contact me. Angled room walls, okay? It just depends in this situation. Let's get rid of this. What are angles? Well, what, what are they designed for? Okay, if we have our room and we angle the walls this way out versus perpendicular, then what have we done? We've changed the angle of attack of the reflections. Okay, is the angle and all of this good? Depends what we're doing in the room. Is it two channel listening? Then we run a ray trace program and we look at the angles. We got to make sure that we're not disrupting this balance of direct energy and reflected energy at the listening position. So we have room sound and then we have speaker sound. So we want that balance in our mixes and in our presentations. Will the angles contribute to that balance? It depends on the angle, depends where they are. If you notice in a lot of ceilings in really well designed rooms, you see that the ceiling slants so that if the listening position is here, the angle of attack from energy is buried behind the listener. There's a reason for that, because you want less reflections behind you than you do in front of you. So all of it has to be calculated. And what is the best acoustical treatment? No such thing. We have two, we have diffusion, and we have absorption. All depends on size, volume, and usage. So there is no such thing as best. What's best for your room, your room will tell you if you just ask it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our videos today. And if you did, we really would appreciate a thumbs up from you. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to the comment section or you can go to our website, acousticfields.com and fill out the contact form. Subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel. We're now doing two videos a week. If you have some ideas for topics, you can uh, submit those to us also. If you're having room issues, we have that free room analysis. You can click on the button below and we'll compare your room to our database of 120 built rooms that uh, we built and actually measured. And I guarantee you, your room is in that database. So just click on the button below for the free room analysis. Thank you.